Hey guys, this is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Welcome to episode five of my garage build. So today I'm gonna be starting to form up the footers for the mono slab for my garage. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm getting going on my forms. I wanted to kind of get an idea of how my process was gonna go before I show any footage. So what I did is I'm starting right here in this corner and it's a little bit lower than this string, of course, but this string is a good reference for sideways to get it right in place that way. So what I did is I drove some stakes in, kept it right in place. I set some boards across here, some 2x4s, 2x6s, just some short scraps across the dish to kind of keep it approximately in place. Then I drove some stakes in to get it really close that way. Of course right now the wind's blowing and I'm walking, so it messes up the string. You can kind of see there the string is really good. And I'll do some final checking on that when I backfill this and stuff. So. What I decided to do here, hopefully the wind's not too bad, but I put some strong backs in here, a 2x4, just on edge like that. Call that a strong back, at least in certain applications. So I'll try to show that a little better. So there's stakes in under there, as you can see. But after I did that, I drove the stakes low enough so that way I could get this 2x4 in there and still have it down from the top a little for screening off the concrete. So hopefully that'll work out. These are 16 footers. I'm putting one right here close to the end. And then to start, I set the screw in here just to keep this end in place. And then I go down here, get this end set. I get it really close with this string to know that it's pretty close in place. And then I usually put a stake in the middle as well, like that. But then I gotta find a finisher here. So. I'm a little bit oversized with everything since I'm going three inches over, so I need to find a 10 footer to finish this. So the way this came out, it's a little over eight feet, so I want to find a 10 footer, which I do have some. So right now I got 48 feet done. These things run a half inch long, so I'm right at 48 foot one and a half inches, which doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna run this one long. It's gonna run past here a little bit, past the corner, and then this one's gonna butt into it. So that's how I decided to do it. Okay, so I got another section ready here to do another strong back. What I'm using for these is a GRK number 10 by 3 and 1 8. I like the number 10 more than the number 9 for this kind of stuff just because it holds a little better. But you can use whatever you want. And if you're worried about the screws, in this case, the way I'm doing it, I'm putting it in from this way, but I'm going to have insulation foam board on the other side, so that will protect that from being full of concrete. If you're going to be using a normal foam board and concrete goes directly against it, putting screws there is a bad idea. So you'd almost have to tow them in from the outside or something. But for this, it should be protected from concrete, so that's what I'm gonna go with. So yeah, it's a little bit of trial and error, figuring out how to set things up kind of temporarily getting the stakes in and stuff, but I'll try to show the process here. So these boards just hold everything temporarily. And I'm trying to get it up close to the string, but a little bit underneath it. So that's all this is for, is just to hold it temporarily for me. Since I'm low on this end, I'm gonna pick this up. And if it's just a little too high, this dirt's kind of crumbly. You can just tap it down a little bit. Now I have my laser transit set up over there. And so I use this to get it approximately close. So it's a little bit low. So if it's just a little bit low, you can find a rock or anything. Put it under your two bys. Get this pretty close. Boy, that's really close. Once I know this one's set, so I usually try to put a screw in right here. And if there's a little discrepancy in the width of the boards, I line the inside up because that is the one that's going to matter. Now I have these long stakes. They're three foot stakes. I like them because they go down in and have lots of extra length for getting down in the ground. 
This dirt is so rocky, sometimes I have a hard time getting it in straight. But what I try to do now is line up the string right here as close as I can. Get this as close as I can. Now you have to watch so this doesn't walk. You can push against it to keep your stake right in place. With These have holes in them to put screws in, so line it up the correct way. Now if you push it too hard or if the stake's going funny, you can kind of overcorrect it as you're pounding it down. Now since I'm doing this in place, I don't want to take a chance of hitting this board or pulling it back. So I have this cut off stake, piece of metal, I can drive it down further with. The reason for that is so I can get my 2x4 strong back on here and have it get down below this edge. So you always have to be checking this string to line this up. Now if you can't get this exact right now, don't worry too much because when you fill this back in, you'll be able to move these some. But that's looking pretty good there. Alright, now that I got that stake in, this is easier because it's an 8 foot. I've been doing the 16 foot ones, but the process is pretty much the same. Now since this building is 32 and it's 32 foot 3 inches to the form to form, side to side, this is what I had to do. I found a chunk of LVL. I'm going to put it in like this. And you can see it lines right up with that string. Then this one here will run on bast. And this here, if I fasten it good, right in there, that will make up the difference with that I'm short. Because I didn't want to cut into another board or something or have three seams on here. So that's what I came up with. Okay, so I'm ready to put some strong backs on here. Since this side here is 32 feet, I like to split the long one right in the center of this one. So I'll put an eight foot on first, 16 footer, then another eight footer. So I'm gonna start with this eight footer first. I usually put one in the middle of an eight foot section. So every four feet, then I come to the middle of a 16 foot section. That way it's centered and balanced. And usually if these stakes hold out pretty true, they will hold it and support it for me. every four feet. Now this eight footer I'm gonna leave off for now because I put this stake in just temporarily. You probably saw me putting it in earlier wondering what I'm doing. I just put that in temporarily till I get this one running across. It was all rock in here so I couldn't drive a stake. So I'm hoping on this side I can do it, drive the stake and then this one I can screw in this way and it'll support this one. 
So as I'm working here, you probably noticed that my boys are running around everywhere around here, but they live here, so they get free rain too. But I'm trying to keep them out of the way, keep them safe. The one good way to learn is to be right there hands-on learning. That's how I learned from my dad. And I want them to learn, but I want them to learn in a safe manner. So you might see them a little bit in time lapse and stuff. I try not to show them too much just for YouTube reasons. But I just want to mention that, that they are out here, they're learning. I like them to learn, but I want to do so in a safe manner. Okay, so I wanted to show you this really quick. If you have a stake that gets stuck, this one hit a rock down there and it's starting to go this way. If you wiggle them like this with the vice grips, come right out. That's the best way to pull one of these stakes. Otherwise, it's a pain. So I just wanted to show you that really quick. This one's actually kind of made for pipe, but you can use any vice grip. The other thing I was gonna tell you about, if your two by is twisted, which sometimes these are, this one's pretty twisted. The most important thing is to keep the top in place because that's what is going to determine where your concrete goes. So even if it's twisted a little bit, sometimes like putting a stake in straight like this, you can see there's a little gap here down at the bottom. When you screw this, it'll help to pull it tight as well. Or when you're all done, if you get this next board up and that's straight, you can put a piece of two by four or something here to kind of pull them together, but try to keep the top correct. So coming down this row here, I didn't have enough stakes to put them in every eight feet. So I'm just putting in enough to hold it for now, one at each end. That's why I'm not doing the strong backs as well, whaler boards, whatever you want to call them. Some people call them whalers, I think, and some people call them strong backs. You don't have to get hung up on the terminology. Depends on where you're from in the country. You call them different things. Sometimes these factory cuts aren't the greatest. This one here was a quarter inch off. It was gapped at the top, so I had to trim it off square to get it to fit up there. So now I'm getting ready to finish setting this into place. This is as far as I got for right now. I'm still waiting on some stakes to finish over there. But a couple of mistakes I wanted to show you that I made. Originally, for my particular situation, since I was long on this run going down here, since I used the 10 foot down there, I had plenty to trim off. What I should have done is let this come all the way out here so that this one can butt into it. But the way I fixed it is I just put a block in here. I even spaced it a quarter inch to give myself a little extra room over there. And then I just put a block in like this, and then I just ran my strong back into it like this. So that should be a nice solid corner. When I get all done, I may reinforce it a little bit more, but it did the trick for that. Then down on this end, I did it a little bit differently. So yes, here's where, since I spaced the other side correctly, that I was able to just use a full inch and a half block right here to put this in here. Then I just ran this past a little bit since I have plenty to use on the other end. And then this way, I had plenty to screw into. So that's how I did that corner. Then down here, you remember me talking about that corner earlier down here where it was spaced a little bigger than an inch and a half. I had to cut an inch and three quarter. It's just, I'm using these boards full length and sometimes they vary a little bit in length. They're a little bit over 16 feet. But since I'm making my forms three inches bigger overall, this is the only reason that I'm having this issue. So if you do it differently, you won't have this. But I just want to show you, so I put this chunk of LVO in here, I just had some. This was just to space it correctly mainly. And then I put this block in here to carry the load and fasten it in the back side right here. So that's what I did there. And that should work really good by the time it's all done. Okay, so I wanted to show you the next thing that I did. And I didn't really do any time lapses of it just because of time constraints. But I ended up adding another 2x6 along the bottom all the way along the bottom, all the way around. And the reason I did that was I just got to see that there's too much daylight underneath and I wanted to be able to backfill on this side because I'm going to have to use some of that crushed gravel that I got right there and I'm going to pack all along here to support this. Anyway, what I wanted to share with that really quick I ended up using three 16-footers just like the top ones. I ran them long, used 10-footers over here. 
So in the middles there, I was able to do screws through the stake wherever there wasn't a stake close by. I put a two by four or two by six, just a block to pull all the joints tight. So that's the main thing is to keep them in nice. So that's how I did the outside and then on the inside. So I had to chip away a little bit with the digging bar to get some of these in where the dirt was sticking out. But you can see the debris there is left over. I didn't get rid of all of it yet. For the most part, I didn't have to do much digging, but that bar came in really handy to dig a little bit of that where it was sticking out. So over here where it was a little bit short, since it's 32 foot three inches, I just put a block out there to cover that gap and it worked out good. I put one over here too. There's some dirt in the way, so I just put one angled there. So you can see there's different ways you can do that. So I'm just basically, like I said, making so I don't have to take up so much room with all my gravel caving in there and stuff. I wanna just be able to put some in there to support this, but not go through my whole gravel pile. And I don't want it to cave in on here because I have to put a couple inches in here and pack it down. It's gonna be about an inch below whatever I got there. Since this stuff is dimensional, I wanna go full 16. So that ends up being like 15 or so. So I wanna go an inch below that, but I figured for a couple inches of gravel in there so I can pack it down really good. And then now that I got that all in and secured, I think the next thing, since my stakes showed up, is like brace those. And then I plan to start plumbing after that. So I got started on that a little bit earlier. You'll see some clips later about that. But what I did was I just got this laid out to give you a little preview of what's coming up. But I think that's the next step is getting that plumbing figured out and in the ground first because all the gravel is going to go on top of that. All right, guys. Well, before I can completely finish the footers and backfill and all that, next I have to do plumbing because I have to dig under these footers to get the plumbing done. So I can't finalize all the backfilling until I do that. So the next video coming out is going to be about digging in the plumbing. So make sure to watch out for that one. Then after that, we'll continue on backfilling the footers and getting the slab ready to go. All right, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching, guys.